so the kidlets have been out of school for like two days and at first it was like really exciting and we're gonna do all these awesome things and they are just fighting with each other just non-stop all day long which is really weird to me I didn't actually think that was going to happen being you know done with school after being at home and homeschooled for a year because you know dumpster fire and all of that and yet because they don't have that daily like routine now they're just losing their minds and just sniping at each other all the time and it's freaking me out so much so that I think I'm just gonna tell them after like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow that uh, summer break is over and just start up with another school routine because they are killing me like it's a lot and I'm super glad that I'm here with you right now and not with them right now because they're cleaning their rooms and screaming at each other while they do it from different I'm glad to be out here is the point my kids don't actually have anything to do with um, today's pour and what we're talking about although kind of because we're talking about emulsion and creating a stable solution and that can also be brought into like life in some kind of philosophical teach you a lesson kind of way but I'm not gonna do that because I literally just thought about that and then I have to like think about that more and so no I'm gonna tell you all about the thing that we're doing in just a minute but before I do hello I am Mrs. Soap and Clay let's make stuff How's it going Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay where we make all the soapy things and you are here for day 50 of 365 days of soap and yeah today we're talking about emulsion. All about emulsion, emulsification, how to create a stable solution within a soap which is important. Now you've heard me say time and time again within the videos either doing an emulsion check and going yep we're not in emulsification yet or the importance of just soaping to emulsion because no matter what you do after that it becomes soap now emulsion is the point where the oils and the lye water have mixed together appropriately that it's created a, a stable solution that's not going to separate if it falls out of solution you're in for all kinds of problems and those are not problems that you want, really want to deal with in soaping. So we're going to talk more about emulsification and what that means, how to find it, and you know what happens also when you don't hit it, you know, now. So let's go to the video and we can chit chat all about that there. Oh God, it's so hot. Okay, I am recording this on the hottest day I have ever experienced in the Pacific Northwest, just as an FYI. In the face videos, I am wearing a shirt over my swimsuit and nothing else. Anyway, that's the point. Focus. We're talking about emulsification. And that ain't it. Um, so you see how it's separating there on the stick? That's a nothing solution. Now, so I interchange words like emulsification and emulsion pretty, pretty frequently. Um, it's kind of the same thing, but also kind of not. Now, you see that? You see we have a... A better texture on this don't worry we're explaining it more we've got lots of uh, uh, yep but look how it's starting to fall out of solution there on the head see how it's getting grainy 
Yes. So I'm still not, I do not have an emulsion yet. So we're not, we're not there. Now, emulsion is for anyone who like, you know, cooks or makes dressings. It's the process of forcing two things that don't like each other, like oil and water, fats and water, into a stable solution. Now, that's really all you need in soap making is to find emulsion. You have to achieve a stable solution, a solution like that. That's actually pretty great. Do we see any separation there? You see how it's colored? really well. That's a very light emulsion. I would still mix it a little bit more unless I knew that I was going to be mixing a whole lot of colors into it because you see the longer it sets, it does start to separate. Now that can be fine, again, depending on how many colors you're mixing into something. So how much more mixing occurs really, but really right there when there's some definite weight to it, you don't see any graininess in it. And you don't, yeah, it's a very smooth, beautiful consistency there. That's when you know that you have an emulsion. Now, emulsion is the most important part of soap making because once you hit emulsion, no matter what you do with it from that point on, it becomes soap, no matter what, no matter what. However, spotting an emulsion can be tricky, especially when you're dealing with different kinds of um, oils and their colors or different sort of additives that you would put into your lye solution like teas or beers or milks because it's already changing the color that you're starting out with but and so I do believe that that's why you know for first-time soap makers we focus on trace look for trace because trace is sort of easier to spot right when you do the whole taking your stick and going across the top of the the batter and it leaves little trails that fall in you're at a light trace see how how kind of see-through that is and we still have very active little bumps and grains going on in there that water and fat it's not doing its thing it's it's not it's not working together now going back to like the whole thing with like making dressings right you have your oil and your well, vin vinegar? I don't know. You know how you have little dressing things for salad and they're like stir, stir, stir while you're pouring it over your salad. And so it's a temporary emulsion. Now, I guess that's fine for making a dressing, but it's not fine for, for soap making or like lotion. If you've ever made lotion, it's the exact same concept. You have an emulsifying wax in there to force the oils, the fats, and the water to work together and form a stable solution. What happens if you don't form a stable solution is that it falls out of solution and the separate parts go back to being separate parts, right? And so the water will end up seeping out of your bar. You, Your oil will ever, well, it's actually interesting. I've never poured an oil, a, a soap at not emulsion, and so now I want to do it just to show you because that would be cool. Anyway, that, see how there's weight to it. Now, weirdly with my stick blender, I can also hear when I'm at an emulsion. The, the, that's gorgeous. See that? So lovely. We have no separation at all. It's holding up on its own very nicely, not coming off of the stick at all. That is a beautiful, a beautiful emulsion. Now, for these purposes, I'm going to continue mixing a little bit because I actually need this particular batch at a... Yep, I needed it trace, but that's also, you can start looking for trace too. So, the basics, again, of emulsion are it's forcing two things that don't like each other, like fats and water, to play nice and, you know, become a stable solution. But... Where does the lie come in in all of this? Let's talk about it. Okay, so another example of emulsion, and let's see if you guys can spot it throughout all of this, because, you know, that'll be fun. But now, what lie is in soap is actually pretty cool. 
because lye acts as both the emulsifier, like an emulsifying wax, for example, but also as the catalyst for the chemical reaction called saponification, which is necessary for, for soap to become soap, right? But in the immediate lie, because you are whisking it up and doing its thing, you're creating essentially a temporary emulsion just by nature of whisking. So if you were to whisk oil and water, just the two of them together, the fats and the water, as you have seen when making salad dressings, it looks like you have a nice solution, right? But then of course, very quickly, it falls out of solution once you start stop mixing it. So lye acts as the emulsifier, as well as the catalyst for the saponification to turn it into soap. Now, the difference between something like, you know, soap and lotion is that in this process, the emulsifier, the lye, is used up because, because of said chemical process, chemical reaction, saponification, right? So the emulsifier is used up. Whereas in lotion, if you're using an emulsifying wax, well, that's still in the lotion. That's required to stay in there forever in order to keep your lotion in a solution. But with lye, because again, we're working with actually turning fatty acid chains into essentially a salt, the, uh, the lye is used up in the process. So it's kind of an interesting thing, lye in all of the, all of the jazz. Now, what trace do you think that is? Just for funsies. Um, it's very, it lye is very interesting, you know, ingredient in soap making in that it serves a couple different purposes, which is fun. Now, this is what I was talking about before. This is actually a pet shampoo that has a lot of really dark oils as well as aloe vera for the liquid in the lye solution. And so right off the bat, things start looking weird. It's harder to spot emulsion during the emulsification process because the color is just so different. So my recommendation always is take your, you know, your stick and just do, you know, what I've been doing, hold it up and let it sit for around 20, 30 seconds and just watch what it does on the stick. If it starts to separate into sort of grainy bits versus, you know, more clear see-through bits, then don't stop at that point. You need to keep mixing, right? Also, other ways to do it is you can take your spatula and sort of pull it up on your container which is another reason why I love making soap in Pyrex versus like white plastic containers or even any of my really big pots because it's harder to see in anything that's other than clear whether or not that solution is going to sort of stick to the sides and not separate. And you can tell when it separates, it slides down the sides in kind of weird manners for sure. But yeah, so trying to find emulsion in something like this, wherein you're playing with everything that goes into the, into the lye solution, it can be complicated. And so I do understand why we go to teaching people how to find trace instead of emulsion. But once you learn to find, to spot emulsion and you stop at that point, all of your really complicated pores get wildly easier. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of why we're focusing on all of this today in this video, let's go check out a couple other examples of this. Okay, so we're gonna go through a few more of these and you guys pay attention, spot the emulsion while we are doing this. But you know, basic basics. Again, emulsion is necessary to make soap. If you do not achieve emulsion, your bars will separate, they will fall out of solution. In strange ways, they will still solidify. Damn it, I'm gonna do that video. I'm going to do that video. I'm going to pour not emulsified soaps like completely. I did the lye heavy soaps that kind of, you know, but just I'm going to do it. So what do we think? We had an emulsion there. See how it's getting grainy. See how it's not fully coating the head of that 
immersion stick. It's not quite there. We definitely need some more work. And also you see how it lightens in color. That's another thing to look for too. Now, what do we think? Super light emulsion. But it's there. No separation there. Love it. Let's check another one. And so once you find, once you learn to find to spot emulsion and just stop soaping there at that point, what is that? Again, that's not even an unstable solution. That's literally just a nothing solution. Once you learn to spot that and just stop mixing at that point and go ahead and separate out your batch or color your batch or do whatever. Now see, looky there, it's getting a little bit Oh, but see, we have separation. Yeah, so take your stick out and e examine the head. Uh, oh, God. Every time, I swear to God, guys, I'm a child. Stop it. Yeah, so definitely inspect your tools. Just give it time. The 20 seconds that you take it out of the container and just observe it, trying to find your emulsion, it's not going to kill your recipe. It's not going to get over thick. It's not going, no. And so start doing that reasonably early on in your pouring, right? I would say about 20 seconds in, start pulling out your stick and checking it. Wow. So dirty. And there's a whole bunch of emulsified and emulsion soap examples. Made sense. Me and words are not so much today. Sorry. The kids screaming are still, it's still in my head. I have a headache. It's a thing. Yes. Anyway, yes. So uh, all things emuls emulsion and emulsification. So if you learned something, I'm super glad you did. If you need to go rewatch it a couple times because I'm a fast talker, sorry, um, slow me down. It's, it's cool. You could do that too. But yeah, I am thinking after doing this emulsion thing that maybe we should do a trace video too and really show you all the different stages of trace and you know what that means. Again, I don't like really using the term trace, but since that's the common word in the soap making community to describe the different thicknesses of batter, it's going to be the easiest way to explain it to you. But then, you know, we can have some actual visuals about what all this looks like and kind of how much time you have to do stuff based on the levels of trace, because that's a whole last thing too. So if you're interested in that, let me know is the point of that. Just drop the comment below. Yes, if you are interested in, you know, seeing that video and you're not subscribed and you're afraid you're going to lose me because I'm very forgettable, hit that subscribe button. That would be excellent for sure. We do all of these uh, tests and deep dives and all the sciencey knowledge and all the stuff every day, as the name 365 Days of Soap might suggest. So you can come be a part of the Sudzer family. For those of you who are a part of the Sudzer family, hey, thank you. I appreciate you every day and that will never stop being true. I do appreciate you for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for the day. I'm going to go be referee for another couple more hours until I can send them to bed. Um, I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of non-headache soapy fun. Bye.